Hello everyone, welcome to another presentation on this channel. Today we are going to talk about unstable behavior of current mode controlled DC DC converters and its solution. In this video we will start with an introduction, then we will talk about the unstable behavior of current mode controlled DC DC converters operating with a duty cycle higher than 0.5. We will see the solution which is adding an auxiliary ramp. We will talk also about DCM operation. We will present how to implement practically the auxiliary ramp and also as usual we will present several LTSPICE simulations to illustrate the different concepts and ideas. There is a relevant video previously which is Power Electronics number 37 entitled Simple Dynamic Modeling of Current Mode Controlled DC-DC Converters which is advisable for you to watch before going on with this video. In this previous video, Power Electronics number 37, we presented the current mode control of the CDC converters. In this control methodology, what we are doing is to measure the current through the inductor and compare this current with a peak value. So when the current through the inductor reaches this peak value, the transistor of the converter is turned off and then we wait until the end of the period and after this period the clock activates again the transistor. You know this very well, we are operating at constant switching frequency F and in this video we studied the behavior and we presented a dynamic model for the converter. Also, in this previous video, we said that for duty cycles higher than 0.5, the converter becomes unstable. So today we are going to focus on this aspect and we will study why the converter becomes unstable when the duty cycle is higher than 0.5 and how to solve this stability issue. First, let's start by analyzing the inductor current in a steady state for the three common topologies for the back boost and back boost converter. For the three topologies, we have that during the on time, the current through the inductor is increasing when the transistor is on. We are going to designate the slope of this current as M. During the off time we have that the current is decreasing, the transistor is open and the slope of this current we are going to designate it as minus M prime. So M prime is going to be a positive number. Here on this table we have the different values of the slopes M and M prime for the three converters depending on the voltages at the input and the output and depending also on the inductor. We know that in a steady state we are going to have that the current at the beginning of the switching period has to be equal as the current at the end of the switching period. We are designating this value here of the current as the valley current IV and the peak current is IP. So in a steady state we have that this value here is equal to this value here. So we can say that the difference between the peak current and the valley current is equal to M dt and also equal to m prime d prime t just by analyzing the triangles here. So we have this important relationship in a steady state which is the relationship between the slopes and the duty cycle d and the complementary duty cycle d prime. Of course we know that d prime is equal to 1 minus d. So let's see now how to study the stability of this type of control. Here we have the current through the inductor in a general situation. We know that this point here, IP, is fixed due to the action of the comparator. 
So the only degree of freedom that the current wafer has is on the value of the current at the valley, so is IV. So as in any other system, even in physical systems, the way to study the stability is to do a perturbation of the system and see if the system recovers its original situation after a given period of time. So the procedure that we are going to follow is to do a perturbation on IV and then to calculate the subsequent values of IV and to see if these subsequent values tend to the original value, to the initial value of IV. In other words, we can perturb IV and calculate the subsequent perturbations on IV after several switching periods. If these perturbations tend to zero, this means that the system is stable. If these perturbations tend to increase continuously, obviously the system is going to be unstable. We can illustrate this with a physical system as shown here. For example, in this case, we have this ball at the bottom of a valley. So if we do a perturbation on the position of the ball by moving the ball a small distance, delta x, as shown here, then we know that the ball is going to fall back again, going a little bit up and then down and the perturbations are going to decrease and decrease and then finally we will get the original position again. So this is a stable system from the point of view of the position of the ball. However, here we have clearly an unstable system. If we have the ball at the top of the mountain and then we do a small perturbation on the position of the ball, then we will see that the position of the ball will be increasing and increasing and then the system will be unstable. Of course, all the systems have limits of operation. In the case of the ball, we will have at some point the ground and then the ball will reach this position and remain at it. In the case of the current through the inductor, we have the top limit, which is the value of IP, which is limited by the action of the comparator, as we know, and we have also the limit zero because the valley current cannot get below zero. When the valley gets zero, we enter into this continuous conduction mode and the current will be zero for the rest of the period. So here we can see this process. We start from IV and we do a perturbation on IV by decreasing IV in a value as shown here, delta IV0. So from this point, the current is going to increase with an slope equal to M until reaching the point IP. At this point, the comparator activates the reset of the flip-flop and the switch is turned off. So the current is decreasing until the end of the period. Note that the value of the period is fixed by the clock. We are operating at constant switching frequency. So this value that we reach here is different from the original value of IV and the difference is the perturbation at the starting point of the next period, which is delta IV1. Now we need to calculate this value here. First, we are going to calculate delta IV0 as a function of the different parameters. For this, we use this triangle here that we can obtain from the waveforms. This distance here is equal to this distance here, so this is delta IV0. And this distance here is the increasing on the on time, which is delta D times the switching period. And this part here of the triangle is the slope 
m. So we get this triangle here, and we can immediately obtain the value of delta i v0 as a function of the different parameters. This is a negative value because we are at the first perturbation, we are decreasing the value of i v. And we can do similar thing with delta i v1. This distance here is equal to this distance here, uh, this is the increasing on the own time, and then we have this slope, which is minus m prime, so we get this triangle here, and then we obtain this expression for the value delta i v1. Note that delta i v1 is now a positive value because m prime is a positive value, and delta d and t, of course, are positive values. So now, by solving these two equations here, we can get this relationship between delta i v1 and delta i v0. We have seen that in steady state, the ratio m prime over m is equal to the ratio d over d prime. We can consider this also during this perturbation interval because as we have seen the slopes m prime and m depend on the input voltage and on the output voltage and these are variables that are changing slowly they are not going to change during a switching period so we can approximate this expression using the steady state relationship so we obtain this value here if we do the same analysis for the next cycle, then we will get the next perturbation, delta i v2, in the same way. So we can obtain, as a function of the original perturbation, delta i v0, with this expression here. And in a general situation, after k cycles, we can write this expression here for the perturbation after k cycles. So we can see that the perturbations are going to be changing in sign during the several cycles. As we can see here, we have started with a negative perturbation below IV and the following perturbation is higher than IV. If we go to the next Period, then we will see that the perturbation would be negative below IV, the next one over IV, and so on. Now we need to study the stability of our system. We have this expression for the subsequent values of the perturbations. So we can analyze the value of the different perturbations by analyzing this factor here, d over d prime. We can see that if d is greater than d prime, then the subsequent values of the perturbations are going to increase and increase, and they tend to infinite. So the behavior is going to be unstable. If d is lower than d prime, then the subsequent values of the perturbations are decreasing, so they are going to tend to zero and the system will be stable. If d is equal to d prime, then the value of the perturbations remains constant, so the system is critically stable. So the conclusion is that our system is going to be stable when d is lower than d prime and d prime is equal to 1 minus d. So this means that d has to be lower than 0 0.5. Let's see some simulation results now to illustrate this behavior. Here we have our back converter with the current mode control. Here we have the clock, the flip-flop. We have the comparator. This is the current through the inductor at this point. And this is the peak value, which is our control parameter. And what we are doing is to start with a value of IP equal to 0 0.9. And at a given instant, 400 microseconds, we increase the value of IP in 0 0.15 amperes. And here we have the simulation results. So for the value of 0 0.9, we have here in blue the value of IP, 
and in red we have the current through the inductor. In green we have the clock signal. So we can see how the system reaches a given value for the output voltage and at 400 microseconds we do the increasing in the value of IP. So with this we get a new value of the output voltage and we can see that the system is stable because the duty cycle that we need for these operations here we have something like 4 volts and here we have something like 4.5 volts both values are below 5 volts so the duty cycle that we need is lower than 0.5 so the system is stable at both points let's see now what happens when we try to increase the value of the peak current of the inductor so that the output voltage is going to be higher than 5 volts. Here we are selecting now a value of 0.6 over the 0.9 originally that we have at the initial operation. So here we have the simulation results. Here is the output voltage for IP equal to 0 0.9, something like 4 volts, and the operation is stable. But at this point, we increase IP to this value here, which is 1.5 amperes and then we can see how the operation becomes unstable and also we can see how the voltage at the output is changing due to the unstable behavior. So this is because we are trying to get at the output a value higher than 5 volts. The input voltage is 10 volts so we require a duty cycle higher than 0.5 and the system becomes unstable. Remember that these different components that we have here in this circuit, like this one and this one here, are not available with the original distribution of LTS bytes. They are from our Simulink compatible control library. So if you want to use these components, please take a look at this video and subsequent videos about this control library. This library is available from my website. Well, this concludes this presentation today. In the next video, we will see how to solve the problem of this unstable behavior that we have when using current mode control with DC-DC converters. I hope that you find this information interesting for your future activities. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.